Welcome. Hello. Howdy. Hey there. How you doing? What's up? How's it going? Hanging. Crack it. What's the word? No more. Please. This video is going to be long. No way around it. So you might as well get comfortable, just like all my videos. Especially videos about stuff I like or care about. Honestly, I think you're gonna get used to it pretty quickly. And Obviously, I am a bit late to the party. I know about it, Cass. As The Witcher's second season is already out, and I'm only just now releasing my first video set in this world. But better late than never, I suppose. Who even are you? Today, we are going to be talking about Yennefer of Vangerberg. The Horsewoman of War. Specifically, the Netflix version portrayed by Anya Charlatra. Oh, that one. The Horse Teenager of Petulance. Her version of Yennefer is the primary target of today's video. There won't be much praise today. Be honest. I have some thoughts. Maybe you ought to mind your own business, cowboy. I have some ideas. I didn't ask you and I don't care. And I'm here to make my sacrifice to the creative bloody altar that is YouTube. Why would you do that? To the red triangle of the woods with a million subs. Changes have to be made for the show, you know. Fuck off, asshole. Yes, yes. TV adaptations need changes sometimes. That is a cop-out and you all know it. That is overwhelmingly the most common argument in defense of the show. And while that's true, I disagree. I will maintain until my dying breath that a book accurate, Yennefer, the show, story, all of it, would have cost just as much or less to make. I am super, super serial. They could have stayed true to the source material, but they deliberately chose not to. So instead, we got what we got. And I'm not usually one to look a gift horse in the ass. I've never been one to look a gift cock in the beak. Never look a gift or in the mouth. You know, some could argue that some Witcher is is better than no Witcher, but, uh... I disagree. You know, here's the thing. The Netflix show existing means that any other adaptation is at least a decade off, or more. So this is all we have. Sometimes the best thing a flower can do for us is die. And they've done a piss poor job so far of keeping keeping to the more than adequate books. That is obvious. At the end of the miserable godforsaken day, I, I I'm quite a big fan of of the Netflix Witcher series. Despite the many, many problems it has, the story, as butchered and downright backwards as it is, it's still fun to watch unfold. Yeah, I guess so. But only if you don't know what you're missing. If you know what they cut out, it would piss you off too when you think about how there isn't going to be another shot at this amazing, regrettably fictional world for a long goddamn time, if ever. They stole it from us. Bloody Maya Culpa for fucking up Nilfgaard's great push north. Fuck you! The swearing really sucks and ruins Yennefer's character. Don't be so harsh. If you are like me, so basically a giant piece of shit, you swear a lot. So you probably wouldn't assume that I would have too much of a problem with excessive swearing pretty much ever. And why would anyone be thinking about you enough to be making assumptions? I was surprised when I found myself being very annoyed with all the cussing going on in The Witcher. And the more the show went on, the more swearing there was, the more it annoyed me. So I really started thinking about it. Great. Is that what you're doing? It's not the cuss words themselves that's bothering me. It's who they have saying these words. That's what's bothering me. How she sounds when she swears. That's what's bothering me. How her swearing is altering the audience's perception of her. That bothers me. It lacks the cunning of your father's blood. The decision to replace compelling dialogue with cheap, needless swearing is bothering me a whole lot. And the lazy writing. You lost your touch. The fact that they thought that this would be a good idea. That's what's bothering me the most. But you'd rather be blind than see the truth. Let's take the dear friend letter 
as an example. In this letter, Yennefer is absolutely furious with Geralt for a bunch of different reasons. And, and, and you can very obviously see how annoyed she is in her writing, but nowhere do you see any ugly swear words in this letter. Because Yennefer knows how swearing sabotages the perception people have of her, how it limits opportunity and causes unneeded problems. Yennefer would never be throwing around F-bombs and calling people fuckheads. Stregobor is a fuckhead. Or saying stuff like, shit guard. At least conjure me up some decent food before we get to shit guard. It just makes her look and sound far more stupid than she has any right to look. Stupid, crude, impatient, among other things. And he opens up by addressing Yennefer as dear friend. And then her entire response is basically roasting Geralt for choosing to call her that. And it's great. It's just a letter, but it's one of my favorite parts of the book. It is Yennefer Personality 101. If you wonder what she's like, read her letter. And if I'm not mistaken, it does not have a single swear word in it. Yennefer is elegant and graceful, not brash and stupid. <laughs> I mean, she's plenty capable of meanness, no doubt about that. But she would never, ever talk the way Netflix Yennefer does. This firefucker was after him, a mage, I don't know who he was. Now that's how you portray stupidity. Not because she's not allowed to, but because it's needlessly stupid and dangerous. Yeah, go nuts, go nuts. Oh. And could only ever cost her. Of course, women are allowed to swear. I mean, biting sarcasm? Absolutely. Stinging subtle insults and the promise of a long, cold shoulder? No doubt. Icy stares and harsh truths that cut right to the bone every time? You know it, baby. But there is no sign whatsoever of ugly, brutish swearing. Yeah, no shit, man. Listen. Yennefer is above that, literally and figuratively. <sighs> Yennefer's language in the letter proves beyond a doubt that Yennefer is extremely well-read and has an expansive vocabulary. Which indicates she would be knowledgeable on a, on a great many things. Like magic, for example. Chaos is a dumb word to use. And you mean to tell me that Netflix Yennefer is too dumb to realize what swearing does to the perception people have of her? That doesn't make any sense. And you want me to believe that she is somehow the greatest mage on the continent? I'm sorry, but... That doesn't make any sense. I mean, what if Yennefer had talked like this in her letter? Hey, fuckhead, why'd you call me dear friend? Is that all I am to you? And by the way, I'm on my way to your piece of shit fat house bro pad, dear friend. And you better tell fucking Lambert to pick up his shit before I get there. I'll light his smelly clothes on fire, I don't even give a shit. Jesus fucking Christ, Chuck, what the fuck was that? Could you believe Yennefer is actually the greatest anything, anywhere, if she talked like that? I can't even pretend like I would. In the Netflix version of the show, if Yennefer had written a dear friend letter based on how she speaks in the show, she would probably sound pretty damn similar to how I just did. Well, now you see that's bad. That's really, really bad. I'm not saying that women are not allowed to swear, for fuck's sake. Of course women are allowed to swear. Of course they are. Anyone can swear whenever they want to. But don't be surprised when people make assumptions about you when you do. Wait, what, 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 what? But it's important that the writers remember how swearing makes people look, regardless of their gender. Because Yennefer would never forget. That is obvious. Which is why she would never ever be caught screaming and swearing like a bratty teenager the way that they portray her in the show. But you know what? It pisses me off. Not because women can't swear or because they're not allowed to swear, but, be but because Yennefer knows it's foolish and self-destructive to swear. It's out of character for her to do so. That's the point! When this version of Yennefer swears, suddenly she doesn't seem so smart. And without looking so smart, she doesn't seem dangerous. And a dumb mage might mess up a spell or light herself on fire. How could a dumb mage be scary to anyone? In fact, a dumb mage is a, is a pretty juicy target. Juicy target indeed. <laughs> Shit, might have some valuable stuff. People start getting ideas when sorceresses aren't scary anymore. <laughs> could have used this whole situation to her advantage because she's smart we see how smart this version of Yennefer isn't because we saw what she decided to do to egg him on and encourage him to steal her secrets and make her even more vulnerable whoever this character is she's not Yennefer take a look at this scene here I 
I always pegged you as a pervert. Do you really think this is how Yennefer would react to Stregobor pulling a stunt like that? Fuck no! You think she would just capitulate and scream and slam her hands on the chair while he does whatever the hell he wants to her? Fuck no! Do the writers have no idea how manipulation and artifice works? No, no they do not. Obviously. Do they think Yennefer is completely ignorant of the tools that she has at her disposal in a dire situation like this? I mean, she ain't never helpless. Never. No matter what. Most of her interactions are like this throughout the show. Nothing but bluster and anger from Yennefer, as always. Fuck you! Because she can never keep her cool under pressure. Yeah, no shit, Listen. man. Listen. Anytime anyone annoys her, she snaps like a firecracker. Oh, what's the hurry, my dear? What is it with men lurking about this place? This interaction shows, without a shadow of a doubt, that this version of Yennefer is nothing like the other two, and not in a good way. Always remember, there are three Yennefers. Two of them are basically magnificent, brilliant twins, and the other is, uh, mm, a huge disappointment, to put it lightly. Oh, that's just great. Anya's Yennefer, who's been corrupted beyond all recognition, wants to be seen as as a tough and strong, you know, female lead, but is never willing or capable of using the tools she was given to get there. Now that's how you portray stupidity. She's willing to scream and insult and sword fight to get what she wants. Apparently. Yennefer should have been taking advantage of every opportunity she came across to gather information and sow the seeds of doubt in her enemies. That is obvious. Instead, she is more worried about looking tough and getting some jabs in. Yes, but it's different. This version of Yennefer would make the worst spy anyone could ever imagine. Because she not only lacks subtlety, she's never fucking heard of it. Yennefer would fail out of torture school so fucking hard. Torture instructors would be disgusted with her performance. Everybody knows the first rule of torture is to say whatever you have to in order to stay alive. I mean, what would the Black Widow have to say about this? If you want an example of how this interaction should have happened, this scene from the Avengers is, is, is exactly what I mean. We need you to come in. Are you kidding? I'm working. This takes precedence. I'm in the middle of an interrogation. This moron is giving me everything. The real Yennefer could take a situation like this... Stregobor capturing her, and flip it around within moments. She wouldn't be locked in there with him, he would be locked in there with her. Yennefer would have had Stregobor eating out of her hands the moment he asked her about fire magic. Tell me how it felt to control fire. Fuck you! What a waste. Yennefer always has a bunch of different cards to play. She's never helpless. Not when she's got her mind. And right from the moment this in interaction started, Stregobor showed multiple cards. An interest in fire magic being a big one. And Yennefer has no excuse for not pulling that thread. That's a bad thing, no. though, right? If for no other reason than to prolong the conversation to stave off the torture. Yennefer would have known about the method that Stregobor was going to use to get information from her mind. Duh. <laughs> the fact that she didn't use every tool available to prevent that from happening shows how stupid and weak her character is. Stupid, crude, impatient, among other things. You want a cure and it's making you sloppy. And more importantly, how bad the writing is. The real Yennefer would have not only not been the victim in this whole interaction, the real Yennefer could have used this whole situation to her advantage. You're a fake and a fraud! Yennefer could have prolonged the conversation until Tessaia found them. Or, more accurately to her character, she would have used this moment as an opportunity to get information from Stregobor. Instead, she advertises at the top of her lungs how powerless she is to stop him. Fuck you! And how he might as well just skip straight to the torture. She is the worst at protecting secrets. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Not a good thing in someone who is supposed to be the holder of forbidden knowledge. The taunting and swearing, while it makes her look tough to the clueless idiots watching, it shows how stupid she is and how little control she has over the situation. The stupid girl who always caused him trouble. The real Yennefer would have been annoyed when Tessaia showed up, because it would have cut the, inf the information gathering short. Why is it Hollywood writers can never show off strength in ways that make sense? I don't know, man. 
the ability to acquire secrets and information is much, much more dangerous and intimidating than screaming, fuck you. Might as well have screamed, you can do whatever you want to me and I won't be able to stop you because I'm a worthless, poorly written character that has no idea how to take care of herself in such a harsh world. Because that's what her fuck you is saying to everyone else. Crap! Well, I, I ain't standing for this! Well, I'm as hell! There is not a person alive that does not look into the mirror and see some deformity. Except for us. We remake ourselves on our terms. The world has no say in it. Having Yennefer act out against Aretuza as if they've ruined her life and done nothing but horrible things to her just makes her look like a petulant bratty child. I never even wanted to come back here. Look at this place. It's a joke. Maybe it is time for something different. Pipe down. You, you don't get a vote. If I did, I'd vote to burn it all down. Her saying that makes her a petulant bratty child by definition. Entitled young girl whining about how she can't have her cake and eat it too. Oh, let them eat cake! I love that I traded everything to get my seat at court. No the hell you didn't, you spoiled bitch. You didn't trade jack shit for jack shit. Can you not talk that way? You literally won the lottery without realizing it and somehow you have the audacity to, co to complain about it? I'm but a poor victim in these harsh times when examples are made of the unfortunate. I mean, of course, I am not speaking to the real Yennefer here, you know, just the imposter that Netflix has created because the real Yennefer would not be such a baby about anything. Tell me more, man, because you... Fucking loving this. Here's another way of describing Yennefer's childhood, now that we know what her childhood is, since the Netflix show has shown it to us. Very loving but stern mother figure rescues Yennefer from her abusive, comically evil stepfather and a miserable life of humiliation and misery as a crippled half-elf in a medieval world that hates elves. How much for this beast? Six. Four. What are you doing? So, four marks. She's no daughter of mine. Mother figure is hard on her at first, but always caring when it counts. Jennifer! You have taken someone from me. She is never cruel for the sake of cruelty. It's all for a reason. Josiah gives Yennefer more than she could have ever hoped to ask for. And at every turn, Yennefer spits back in her face for it. How did we get this way? I gave you all I could give. What more do you want? <laughs> you know, remember, Yennefer is supposed to be nearly a hundred years old. I've lived two or three lifetimes already. I'm not buying it. She only started resenting Tasaya and Eratuza somewhat recently. She had an entire lifetime of enjoying the gifts that she got, which would have been her her whole lifetime if she never took Tasaya's gifts. And yet, at the end of it, after she's already lived that whole lifetime, she somehow thinks she has the moral standing to complain about the gifts she got. It's time to accept that life has no more to give. That doesn't make any sense. After having that that long life and without having to give it up? What? However, there is one little problem. If she had never gone with Tessaia to Eratuza, she would be dead by now of old age, sickness, persecution, or violence. Yennefer would not have lived long enough to resent anything if it wasn't for Tessaia. So her resentment is a bit misplaced, methinks. No more. Please. You flit about like a tornado. Havoc. And for what? So you can have a baby? A child is no way to boost your fragile ego yet. The motherhood angle really sucks, and it highlights how shitty of a person Yennefer is. This is on you. You knew the cost of enchantment. But I didn't know what it would mean to me. Why? Why do you want a baby? Did you always want to become a mother? I dreamed of becoming important to someone. Someday. Overall, I think the baby fever angle is a tired trope, 
a stereotype, and a damaging one to boot. In the books, there was a brief point where Yennefer wanted to have a baby by natural means, and there were some Easter eggs about it in the games. It was never really a secret that Yennefer wanted to be able to have a baby, but it was never the most important thing to her. She always had other priorities. Especially after Siri came into the picture. What the fuck's going on? And then it was all forgotten about, as it should be. Good! Someone in the writer's room has some strong feelings about child rearing and natural birth, because they are putting way too much emphasis on that shit. How is this possible? Yennefer was warned ahead of time that she would be infertile, and she accepted the deal anyway. There is a cost to all creation, the sacrifice that is always made. To be reborn, you will bear no more. Do you understand? Good. I mean, this is all according to the show, because remember, none of this shit happens in the books. I mean, this show is basically fan fiction at this point, so, you know, I I'm arguing about something that only happens in the show and doesn't happen in the book, and I'm mad that it happened this way and not that way, but, like, you know, why do any of it at all? Why not just stick with the books and cash in like anybody else would have. I don't know. Now he smells of pig shit. Fire. It's your crew. Hey, cool. Stop it. No one's ever kissed her. Could you even stand up straight to do it? Where are you going, Toppy girl? We can teach you. Leave me alone. I can do it. One of the biggest issues I have with how Netflix Yennefer is being treated is how they have completely removed the mystique and mystery that always shrouded Yennefer in the games and books. That's a bad thing, no. though, right? The decision to make Yennefer a bigger part of the show than Geralt was a gigantic mistake. Huge mistake. That anyone could have seen coming. Except for everyone that is involved with producing the show. Welcome to hell. What with Lauren Three Names being part of the production, this was inevitable. God forbid a show called The Witcher centers around The Witcher. No! God, please, no! No! Can't have that. So instead, we get to see every agonizing detail of Yennefer's life. Jesus fucking Christ. Details that would have been much better off being alluded to through dialogue. That's the point! Sometimes not seeing a thing can make it all the more meaningful to people. What? Holy shit. Being forced to imagine what her childhood was like would be a lot more impactful, since her on-screen childhood doesn't actually seem all that bad, all things considered. Oh shit, that's true, it fits. Most kids that grow up in Velen have a much harder upbringing, and certainly the Witchers go through miserable hell compared to anything Yennefer had to deal with before or after the Academy. And nobody cares. Especially if you take the new Witcher anime into consideration. The Witchers have it far worse than any mage. That is obvious. So unless Eratuza is torturing its students off screen, I'm not buying it. So it's safe to say, at least for now, that Yennefer's past was not as harsh or and brutal as Geralt's. That's the point! And a great many others of the Witcher's world. And yet, Yennefer is the one who is always humble bragging about how hard her life is. My world is cruel, <laughs> unpredictable. You enter, you survive, you die. And how her life is harder than everyone else's. And Yennefer is always the first to clam up whenever anyone makes any kind of comment or remark about her past, even if she is throwing insults around herself. What was your ailment before? Clubbed foot? Split ends? You know, Istrid was absolutely right. Victimhood is not Yennefer's color. You know, victimhood is not your color. But of course, Yennefer ignores that bit of spot-on spot on criticism by throwing an insult back at Istrid herself. No heroism yours. Despite this entire argument being contrived bullshit that never should have happened on screen. Okay, Rocky, give it a shot. What? My point is that the show, her character, and everyone else's reaction to her all would have been better if they had just fucked off with expanding on Yennefer's backstory. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. 
you know, and had her play the mysterious puppet master type that seems to know more than she is letting on, who isn't on screen all that often, but plays a big part of the story. If she only appeared when she needed to appear, the audience would be missing her by the time she is back on screen. They say distance makes the heart grow fonder. And Yennefer was never meant to be a main character, because we got too familiar with her, and the air of mystery that surrounded her is now gone. And now she's just as boring as everybody else. Oh, that's just great. Dragon episode of the first season, Yennefer's storyline is is drastically changed from the books. Mine. Somehow, Yennefer is an expert swordsman to rival Geralt, and naturally she has no need of magic to beat a bunch of men, the simple-minded fools that they are. That's a bad thing, no. though, right? Does the production team think everyone is born with innate skills with a sword? Apparently. Or are they going to try to say that Yennefer somehow learned how to sword fight at Eratuza? Please don't try to pull that card, Lauren. Eratuza is not for sword fighters. It's for mages. Duh. <laughs> and having Yennefer be good enough with a sword to fight five people at once, it's overkill. It turns, it turns Yennefer into a Mary Sue. What a waste. So naturally, in the dragon episode, Yennefer goes on an, on an 8 to 12 man killing spree with nothing but an incredibly small sword, high heels, and a fur coat. I don't give a shit who saw what, who did what, or who did who. Without ever taking a single hit from anyone, breaking a sweat, or even chipping a nail. Yes, but it's different. All while Geralt is flailing around looking stupid so Yennefer doesn't get outclassed and outshined in a, in a skill that she isn't supposed to have. Because of course Yennefer has to be just as good as Geralt at sword fighting and with everything else. But you know what? It pisses me off. Even though she is supposed to be a sorceress, the best move she has for us is to kiss Geralt so intensely that he gets a boner so hard and fast that the sheer force of the, of the blood flow creates an earthquake over Los Angeles. Oh god, I hope so. And causes him to blast an, an ultra big ard sign all over these walking foot soldiers of the patriarchy. <laughs> And obviously, Yennefer's kiss was the only reason Geralt could, could do it. So the credit belongs to her, naturally. But you know what? Who gives a shit? See, isn't that better than the books? You are dumb. It is the exact opposite. Yennefer looks good the entire time, while everyone around her pretends that she is a, she is a complete and utter badass that these simple-minded fools could, simply can't handle. But the people are retarded. Because of course, Yennefer can take care of herself in a, in a large 10 on 2 sword fight without using magic. It's almost like they are getting rid of anything that could possibly make Yennefer look weak. Because this scene went a whole fuck of a lot differently in the books. Shut up! Mind your own business! And it was certainly more entertaining there, I'll, I'll tell you that. A, a lot more compelling. Ooh, tell me why. The stakes were a lot higher for all characters involved and the audience watching. It was a more traumatic experience for Yennefer, rather than the minor disappointment that it was in the show. Trauma that led to growth later. You know, because you, you can't have good story with high stakes if bad things don't happen to the characters. And here's my real problem. And having Yennefer be good at everything means that the audience will appreciate nothing about her. You know, she, she, she won't accomplish anything in the audience's eyes if she's born good at, at, at everything. That is obvious. Yennefer's adventure seems more like the kind of adventure you would have if you're dating the dungeon master and you give him, a, you know, a, a real good time in between. No, you won't laugh because it's not funny. You know, every convenient detail will fall into place for you every time and nothing will ever truly go wrong. You know, Lauren and her team, they just simply do not have the balls to actually put Yennefer in a humiliating, compromising position that she needs help getting out of that occurs naturally without compromising the integrity of her character like they portray in the show when she, when she gets caught stupidly and needlessly by fucking Stregobor. 
because Spaghetti Monster for forbid that the female lead ever go through anything traumatic and have to rely on the help of those around her. And Spaghetti Monster forbid the Master Swordsman look more capable with a sword than she does. I mean, why the hell wasn't Yennefer flinging magic spells all over the place during this fight? Uh, I don't know, man. Like, for, for real, what, what was that? Why was there no magic? You know, why, why was she sword fighting? It doesn't make sense. You know, if she was slinging magic, I, I, I'd have shut up about everything I just said and moved right along. But in the book, I mean, she was supposed to be tied to a cart with her titties hanging out. Oh god, I hope so. Screaming, basically helpless. You know, I, I mean, I can sort of understand why they didn't want to do that, but turning her into a sword fighter in, instead of a sorceress is just three steps too far in the wrong direction. Jesus fucking Christ. You know, even if the CGI looks stupid for the magic, it would still be better than seeing her and Geralt flail around doing fuck all. The, the, the fight scene in, in the dragon episode is, t is terrible. Terrible. You know, I, I want a season one, episode one fight scene. <laughs> while Yennefer does some cool magic in the background. What we got was a, was a pathetic wet fart of a scene that was as offensively inaccurate as it was boring. Oh crap! Well, I, I ain't standing for this! Oh, burn as hell! You have to come with me! Now! I don't trust you! In the books, Yennefer was Ciri's adoptive mother of sorts. Their relationship was reciprocated by both parties, and the relationship they had meant a great deal to both of them in different ways. Now, that is all gone. I had no choice. My chaos. I thought I had to... I'm so sorry, Ciri. Don't go. I didn't know who you were. I didn't know what you were to him! How could you do this? I'm so sorry. Lauren has decided instead to have Yennefer try to sacrifice Ciri to a demon goddess that never existed in the source material at all. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, she is basically Gauntor Odim, which is a creation for the games for a really good DLC for The Witcher 3, if you didn't already know. And according to the show, Voleth Mir is a demon who is apparently supposed to be a member of the Wild Hunt, or some shit. Wait, what? Which makes no fucking sense, considering what the Wild Hunt is. You know, elves. But that's besides the point. You know, af after the stunt Yennefer pulls, Yennefer and Ciri's relationship is hopeless. Done. Done. Cancelled. It's over. Or at least it should be. You, you, you can't just come back from that. If Geralt is supposed to forgive Yennefer for trying to portray Ciri to a demon goddess, then this show is hopeless. Because they have no notion of how human interaction works. As if I'd trust anyone else with her. You know, your girlfriend trying to sacrifice your daughter to the devil is something no self-respecting man would ever forgive. Then you're both fools. And how could Ciri possibly trust Geralt if he is willing to forgive something like that for some really nice ass? Captain, please do not do that. Huge mistake. I mean, you know, you should hope that he doesn't forgive Yennefer too. Because him doing so would, would, would send one hell of a nasty message to young boys. Won't somebody please think of the children? But the, the only way forward at this point is to break Geralt and Yennefer up. Oh god, I hope so. Anything else would ruin both of their characters. I mean, Ciri has been through too much to ever believably forgive anyone for breaking her trust like that. What the fuck's going on? The consequences of betrayal for Ciri are simply too high. She has to be distrustful to survive. And Yennefer broke that trust. Fuck off, asshole. If they have, if they have Ciri forgive Yennefer, that's gonna send an even nastier message to young girls who have been abused than, than, than what the boys are gonna pick up from Geralt forgiving Yennefer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
Yennefer would have to be all apologetic to, and really have to suck up to Geralt and Ciri for a good long time for them to ever believably forgive her. And I don't think that the production crew and Lauren has the balls to portray her like that. Don't be so harsh. Because so far, Yennefer apologizes for nothing, treats everyone like shit, even when she has very good reason not to, and she expects everyone to just cave and do whatever she wants them to do as soon as Yennefer comes out with a witty retort or a just plain old mean insult. The chapter would have my head. Do they already have your cock? <laughs> Show us yours first. This works both ways now. You know, watch Lauren try to turn it around and somehow end up having Geralt pursuing Yennefer, even after the shit she pulled. You, you would better not do that. I know I've hurt you. I don't forgive you, Yennefer. And you watch. Siri will just give right in to Yennefer as soon as they have a heart-to-heart -heart and Yennefer gives her some, you know, gives Siri some platitudes and, and explains what it's like to lose her magic, you know. It's just so hard, it's so, I lost my magic, you know, you, you understand, right, Siri? Us three will help each other. What is destined cannot be avoided. And it shouldn't be. Siri will immediately understand and forgive Yennefer right away and without reservation. However, there is one little problem. Let's try to imagine for a second if if Yennefer in, in The Witcher 3 tried to give Siri to the crookback crones because she lost her power. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, do you really think that Geralt could forgive Yennefer for that? Or, or anyone for that? Fuck no! I sure as fuck don't. You know, there was just, there was, there was no good reason at all to compromise everyone's character just to have Yennefer lose her powers. God damn you! With, with this whole thing, if Ciri and Geralt forgive Yennefer, then not only is Yennefer's character going to be ruined because she tried to sacrifice Ciri, Ciri's character will be ruined because she will become the ultimate naive, d trusting fool, which ruins all credibility they've built up with her character so far. Oh, that's just great. And Geralt, basically, if he for forgives Yennefer, is the worst guardian ever and shouldn't be trusted with making decisions about Ciri's safety because Yennefer, at least for now, has proven that she can't be trusted. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So if they try to gloss this shit over in season three, then there's, there's really no hope for the show going forward. Done. Done. Canceled. It's over. If, if they should be taken to task about anything on Twitter, it's for, for trying to pass this shit off as, like, no big deal. Because that'll be a real problem. Captain, please do not do that. How did, how did you do that in your first try? Yennefer is one of the greatest sorceresses of her time. She is not the greatest or strongest in the lore, but she is certainly up there. In the Netflix show, though, they are setting her up to be the chosen sorceress. Isn't fire magic forbidden by upstanding mages? Only in so far as there are very few mages blessed with the skill to control the flames. I can't! You can! Let your chaos explode. Yes, she was born with a connection in magic, and not everyone has that. But that doesn't mean that she was born as the Chosen One. Who? Like Siri was. She was special in so far that she was lucky to have an affinity for magic, but the show makes her out to be this extra special chosen pupil that Tazia DeVries cares for a lot more than the others. She is being made out to be the chosen one of mages, and I don't like it one bit. Geralt says you're the most powerful mage he's ever known. There is only room for so many chosen ones. So having every other character in every fantasy story be the chosen one starts to get pretty, pretty tiresome after a while. And it detracts from the character heavily. Huge mistake. You heroic protector! Noble god! 
and Yennefer's relationship is supposed to be the epitome of a rocky, on-again, off-again, borderline abusive relationship that is never going to go anywhere in the end, and they both know it pretty much right from the start. And you're both fools. But, I mean, they, they cheat on each other endlessly. Good! I mean, it's the nature of their relationship. They're apart for, you know, years at a time. So honestly, I wouldn't even say that they're together when they're not together. What? Obviously, I have a big problem with how the show is portraying Geralt and Yennefer and the dynamic between them. So should you. Right now, as of the end of season two, Geralt is basically a gigantic simp with no self-respect. I don't forgive you, Yennefer. Us three will help each other. He is willing to let Yennefer do whatever the hell she wants, like try to sacrifice Ciri to a demon goddess. Yeah. Wait, what? while he remains completely faithful to her. Wait, what? The only time Geralt is seen with other women is before, chronologically, he meets Yennefer in the story. Were you in love? When you live as long as I do, all the names start to sound the same. And before Yennefer, he was always be portrayed as obsessing over a woman. You know, before Yennefer, it was Renfrey, for some stupid ass reason. Who's Renfrey? Hers was the only name you uttered over and over in your sleep. And it's painfully obvious that Yennefer doesn't give a shit about Geralt if we are going by Anya's portrayal of Yennefer. That's why we can't escape each other. Why I feel this way inside. No. It's not because of anything real or true. It's real, Yen. How could we ever know? You know, with her lack of emotions and warmth towards him, even in the most intimate moments. You left fast. You know, it, we never actually see the good parts of their relationship on screen, except for an awkward sex scene in the Dragon episode. The moment I tread most every time you leave is when it fades. When you're really gone. And then there is the shitty dialogue that, that always has her bored, pissed off, annoyed, or indifferent with Geralt. That's why we can't escape each other. I mean, Yennefer even talks shit about Geralt when they aren't together. You should be wary of his kind. They're so often disappointing. You know, she, she simply does not like Geralt unless it's convenient to the story for some reason. You know, like at the Temple of Melitelli. Yen, your heart has been beating fast this whole time. You're nervous. Yennefer was being nice to Geralt the, so that she could get closer to Ciri and try to sacrifice her to the fucking non-canon demon goddess that should have never existed. Good sir. I'm a beacon of purity. <laughs> you know, warmness from Yennefer to Geralt is basically non-existent in the Netflix version of the show. And it's primarily due to y Anya's acting. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh... Your opinion, man. And never mind that Geralt looks far older than Anya's Yennefer. Even though Yennefer is supposed to be, you know, older than Geralt by at least a, a handful of years. I'm not buying it. And they're both supposed to be nearing 100 years old anyway. I mean, it's believable with Geralt, but not even close with this version of Yennefer. I mean, saying that she is nearly 100 is laughable. Bullshit! No fucking way! Her attitude says that she is a teenager at best. And she looks bored with everyone all the time. Her dialogue backs the boredom up, too. It's always insults and rude remarks from Yennefer. <gasps> fuck you! you shut the fuck up. And while book version Yennefer could really lay on the insults if she wanted to, she knew the value of the saying, kill him with kindness. And Anya's Yennefer has no grasp of that concept whatsoever. That is obvious. And to the one person she is supposed to have a soft spot for, she is nothing but shitty and mean. So fuck her and fuck this whole relationship. Can you not talk that way? And since this show is mostly fan fiction at this point, we might as well lean into it so we don't have to watch this train wreck of a relationship any longer. It's becoming painful at this point. No more. Please. Have Geralt hook up with Triss or something. At least, at least 
Triss's actor can show some warmth and kindness towards Geralt, you know, and, and have it look somewhat believable. Geralt and Yennefer on screen, terrible, terrible chemistry. Makes no sense at all. That's why we need a recast. That's the point. No, no, it's, uh, it's just that sometimes boring is better. Istrid and Yennefer in the Netflix show is a bit of a toss-up for me. So you might as well get comfortable or click off. It's hard to give a solid opinion on it one way or another because, you know, I like some things and I dislike others. I really like the actor they've picked for Istrid. He's very talented and he, and he knows his craft well. He's a good actor and that brings, that brings life to the character. Tell me more, man, because you... Fucking loving this. But most scenes with Istrid also have Yennefer in them, unfortunately. Oh, that's just great. We don't get a lot of Istrid by himself or with non Yennefer characters. That's a bad thing, no. though. Right? But there is only so much Istrid can do when the actor he is working with never looks interested in what's happening on screen. I'm sorry you chose power. Anya's Yennefer has more chemistry with Istrid than she does with Geralt, by a long shot, but she doesn't really have chemistry with either one, really. And you're both fools. In the books, I don't feel that way. Geralt and Yennefer in the books are meant for each other, for better or for worse. But in the show, I think it might be better to lean into the fan fiction aspect and have Yennefer and Istrid live happily ever after while Geralt and Triss do their thing or something. And you're both fools. Because this version of Yennefer, based on Anya's performance, does not appear to give two shits about Geralt or Istrid. That is obvious. I have an ulterior motive, you can tell me. What, so you can rat me out to Stregobor? Again? Oh, come on, Yenna. Don't call me that. But Istrid is portrayed to always be pining for her and having always loved her. You loved her. Love. I never stopped. But that poor bastard's so dumb. Moving on. I wish Istrid had more agency outside of doing shit for the sake of Yennefer. I came to Sintra because I thought someone might be here. A woman. Hmm. <laughs> Yennefer. I'm leaving for Sintra tomorrow to help the elves who are migrating, to help people like Like me. How heroic. You know, because the Netflix version of Istrid is actually pretty interesting, and I hope they expand on him more. God, I hope so. I mean, they have to stop with the whole pining for Yennefer bit, though. But I trust you. Love, I never stopped. Or at least tone it down severely, because based on how she treats Istrid, she is not worth it, and he can only ever disrespect himself by giving up on things that he wants for her sake. You know, coming up with excuses to study your Ada, hinges, dead languages, anything to get closer to you again, and every request I made was denied. Based on the show's version of Yennefer and how she treats the men in her life, if Geralt or Istrid ever did anything crazy for Yennefer, they are no better than the worst simping, orbiting yes-men of America today. That's a bad thing, no. though, right? Forget about the girl, get back to work. Because she hasn't done anything to deserve that kind of dedication beyond being attractive. Because it's all I have left! I gave you what I could give. What do you want? Everything. What is lost is lost. You still have so much left to give. The problem I have with these two on screen together is that Tessaia literally outshines Yennefer with emotion and screen presence and just general skill. How did we get this way? I mean, I, I really like the actress for Tessaia. She is really good at her craft. Yeah, that's true. Yeah and she's able to express all kinds of believable emotion, and she does it well. I know you to your core. Your pain is my pain. Triss is scarred, Sabrina's bruised, we're all in pain. Tessaia's performance really highlights the flaws in Yennefer's performance, in my opinion. I know a lot of you are going to say that I'm just biased against Anya, and, and, that's, and that's true. Yeah, that's true. But that doesn't mean I'm wrong. 
You know, the scenes where it's just Tessaia and Yennefer, Tessaia is always the star of the show in everything except appearance. Anya is better looking, of course, according to society's standards. It's all I have left! It's obvious, though, that Tessaia would be way more fun to hook up with. You can't say things like that anymore. I mean, no doubt about it. She looks like a lot of fun. You know, you're a real asshole, you know that? Hey, and also, did you know Tessaia's actor also did the voice for a Anna Henrietta in Blood and Wine? Duh. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure most of you knew that, since it's been plastered all over the internet. But, I like that they hired her, and she's really good. Moving on. The team either needs to have Tessaia tone down her brilliant acting. Captain, please do not do that. Which would be a huge shame. Or... Anya needs to fucking pick up the slack and start showing some damn expression during these supposedly emotional scenes. Try not to be so entirely butthurt, okay? The only time you see any kind of emotion on Anya's face is when she's screaming or crying or doing some sort of extreme emotion that, you know, really anybody can do. I don't believe you! It's, it's the, it's the micro-expressions and the, the subtle changes in the facial features that can convey emotion that Anya just has no concept of whatsoever, it seems like. Because anytime there's any kind of bad news or insult delivered to Anya's version of Yennefer, it's just a blank, empty face that... She looks bored, okay? She looks bored. Holy shit, where did that come from? I know, I know, a lot of you guys like her, I know. There, there's comments all over the internet about how much everybody likes this version of Yennefer, but I fucking don't, okay? See, nobody cares. Nice hat. You know, call me the, the jerk, that's fine, but she just sucks, you know? It was, she could have been so much better as another character. I, you know, I'm, ta I'm talking about Anya here. Who? You know, she could have she could have been a good Fringilla. Now that I think about it, yeah, yeah, Anya could have been a great Fringilla. You know, Fringilla has the kind of uh, royal, you know, snooty boredness that we see from this version of Yennefer from Anya. Keep dreaming, sweetheart. A good example of this is Idris Elba in the new Gunslinger adaptation. I mean, I have a lot of problems with that adaptation, but I thought Idris Elba did a fantastic job of, of portraying the Gunslinger. Duh. <laughs> I mean, his superb acting made his skin color irrelevant. Another example is Nick Fury, portrayed by Samuel L. Jackson. He absolutely made Nick Fury better with his performance. And his skin color didn't make matter one goddamn bit. Here's another. Sharon Duncan Brewster, in the new Dune adaptation, did a great job portraying Kynes. Good! Despite that the character is a white male in the source material. I mean, she is a talented actor that can portray emotion well and deliver her lines with conviction. My what? Her portrayal of Kynes was moving and very entertaining. I'm, I'm all for diversity when the actor being chosen is actually the best person for the job. You pick the one right tool. Anyone that makes the same argument about Anya and her performance in The Witcher must have been high or drunk when they watched the show. And I want some of whatever they're having. Because if it can make Anya's performance pal palatable, then sign me the hell up, cowboy. Jesus fucking Christ. Anya has no acting experience whatsoever beyond The Witcher. Shut the hell up about Wanderlust. That doesn't even count. Anya is only recognized for The Witcher. No one knows her for much of anything beyond that. I mean, that's not an insult because it's true. She's brand spanking new. Now that's not a bad thing in and of itself. And it's one of the reasons she is terrible for this role. Another is because she is too young looking. And she cannot express emotion to save her fucking life. But you know what? It pisses me off. And the writing for her character is absolutely terrible. And it makes Yennefer look masculine, stupid, and crude. Stupid, crude, impatient, among other things. I mean, there are no redeeming qualities to Anya's portrayal of Yennefer besides Anya being super hot and having a killer body. Don't be so harsh. I mean, her face is beautiful too. 
I mean, too, too pretty for Yennefer, to be honest. That's the point! Yennefer is described as being beautiful, but not like supermodel level beautiful. You know, there are supposed to be far, far more beautiful women in the world than Yennefer. And Anya is in the very top echelon of attractive, and that's obvious. I mean, Anya does have a goofy looking smile in some of her pictures, though, like, like this one. She's obvious, she's cute as fuck, you know? And anybody can see that. But there are a thousand and one more reasons why she's not a good choice for Yennefer. No more. Please. And her skin color really has no bearing on any of it. If, if she was a great actor and pulled off the, the emotion well, then I'd be all for it. I don't care about the color, this color of her skin. She doesn't need to be pale. It's just the fucking, the energy she puts out. She puts, you know, Anya puts out a angry, petulant, bratty, I don't give a fuck about you energy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I want some, like, uh, some, some regal, you know, when she walks into the room with her hands behind her back and, you know, the way Yennefer stands with her head looking down a little bit, just looking down at you, staring right through your soul. What is lost is lost. After she burned through Nilfgaard's army and saved the continent, we should all be praising her name. Yet, your heart has been beating fast this whole time. You're nervous. Yes. Yes, we are. If you go to the Witcher subreddit, most comments that are in reference to Yennefer are positive. I will admit. I don't believe you! A lot of people on there are being supportive of Anya's performance. If only it weren't so boring. But those positive comments are often very generic and don't have much specific praise. Usually just generally supportive statements. You made the right choice giving all that nonsense up. You know, yas queen, go girl, that kind of shit. And a lot of times, you know, what they say is in direct opposition to what I'm saying here. Usually it's something like, oh, I liked her too, or she did, she did great, I don't know what you're talking about, or no, don't know what you mean, it's just you, that kind of shit. You know, stuff like that. But those people are basically saying, I don't dislike her performance enough to critique it. But I do dislike a lot of the people that don't like her, so I'm going to, to express an opinion that's opposite to theirs. Because I don't like them, and they don't like her, so I'm gonna like her because they don't like her. You understand? I mean, you're welcome for, for translating that for you. That'll cost you three dollars on Patreon or something, I don't know. No, 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 no. Don't do that. The people that usually go into detail about Yennefer in their comments are people who are criticizing her. You know, people do have a negative bias after all. It's a lot more fun to complain than it is to praise. Of course, there are more detailed positive comments. I I'm just saying I haven't seen too many like that. But I have seen a lot of detailed negative comments. And a, a lot of the negative comments agree on a few different things. You know, like how she can't emote for shit. Or like how Anya has the same blank expression during every fucking scene, no matter how high stakes or emotional it's supposed to be. You can't say things like that anymore. Unless, of course, she is screaming, crying, or one of those other extreme emotions we talked about before. Move, damn it! Fucking parlor tricks! I know I've hurt you. I don't forgive you, Jennifer. Rewriting history with the stories we tell. The songs we sing about our own triumphs is what we do. But I want to honor them. Something more is needed. But what of it? Now, the topic of who should play Yennefer is a pretty hopping subject online. Lots of people have lots of different ideas, but there is no denying the realities of the situation. Anya is not going anywhere. We're doomed! 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 I know that, and you should know that too. As much as I wish she would just fuck off and ruin some other character... I should go. We are stuck with her. No! God, please, no! No! Because Hollywood would rather keep a shitty casting decision than ever admit fault or wrongdoing. My worst fear is true. I'm still not enough. But there is still a lot of speculation about who could replace Anya if something was to come up. Fingers crossed. Sometimes the best thing a flower can do for us is die. You know, nothing bad, of course. Another job, maybe. 
Duh. <laughs> I mean, there are plenty of people all over the internet talking about it and giving their opinions and ideas. Faith sustains us all in dark times. Many suggestions downright suck, but, you know, that's the nature of the beast. And that's only my opinion. I didn't ask you and I don't care. I've seen many, many people suggest Ava Green as the best possible choice for Yennefer. And I cannot help but agree. There are, there are plenty of photos of Ava online that, that suggest that she would have made the best Yennefer. You know, she can also look very imposing under the right circumstances. And she can also look very sweet and kind. But she is always elegant, always graceful, and, and her eyes are striking and penetrating. Ava Green would have been the best possible choice ten years ago. No question about that. But many feel she is too old for the role, and some suggest she has aged rather quickly recently. I don't share that opinion. But I guess I can see where it's coming from. The same argument would be made about multiple actresses I'm listing. My girl Kate Beckinsale, who is easily the most beautiful woman ever born, has been suggested many times as well. A and as amazing as she is, in literally every single possible way, Kate Beckinsale is just, is just too beautiful to be Yennefer. Jennifer Lawrence is another one that is being suggested, and I fucking hate that idea a lot. She would make a terrible Yennefer. She's too kind and too sweet. On top of Jennifer Lawrence being one of the biggest actresses in Hollywood, I mean, she's great, no doubt, just not for this role. And same with this next one, Charlie Theron, is another that was suggested, and that's a solid idea right there. I'm sure with how talented and dedicated Charlize is to the craft, that she could easily portray Yennefer all day long. I mean, with her aura of power, wisdom, and mystery, it, it would be, you know, a walk in the park. Just like the others, Charlize would be a bit too expensive, I think. Kristen Ritter is another suggestion, and while I think she is certainly a better choice than Anya by a fucking long shot, she's not the best choice. I mean, that's for sure. She looks a bit too young, and her voice does not gel at all with what I think most people would expect from Yennefer, if her performance in Jessica Jones is any indication. Having the right voice is more important than you might think. Katie McGrath is another popular suggestion, and she is indeed a very promising candidate. Some pictures of her make her look a little bit young and a bit soft, but there are others that show that she could do a very good Yennefer. A Redditor suggested Janet Montgomery from Salem, and she has some promise, I will admit. The Redditor that made the post about Janet Montgomery uh, did an edit of her in Yennefer's costume, and boy does it look good, I gotta say. And she's, ex she's even expressed some willingness to take on the role when it was suggested to her on Twitter. So there really is no excuse for why she wasn't cast for this role. You know, fan suggestions need to be taken a lot more seriously by the people who make these decisions. The only reason they are interested in these IPs is because we, the fans, love it and want to see it. So, you know, take our ideas more seriously, if you please. Thank you. So Katie McGrath or Janet Montgomery, I think, would be the best choices considering those factors. But to recast Yennefer, Lauren and everyone else need to admit that they've made a mistake in the first place. And, and they will never, ever do that. Never in a million years. For better or for worse, we are stuck with Anya and her sub-quality performance. No more. Please. Unless there is a scheduling conflict or something. Bullshit! No fucking way! Anya's too new for that. So, really, there's no hope of getting rid of her. The best we can hope for is that she gets better at acting and the writers pull their heads out of their asses and, and stop changing shit. But I'm pretty sure that ship has sailed. The show is more fan fiction than anything else at this point anyway, so... As I said, corrupted. Only you can be thrown a lifeline and think that you are saving me. You're afraid I'll be everything you could never be. Without you. Which is the rub. You only want me to do well so long as you have your hand in it. This is the last section I'm recording, and I want to make sure that I have all my bases covered before this is over. Firstly, my objection of Anya's casting does not mean that I am objecting to all representation. I think society, the patriarchy, and the heteronormative meritocracy is nothing but a prison. And the expectations that these constructs put onto all of us are the chains that bind us all within the small box that we are born into. But you'd rather be blind than see the truth. But I have a soft spot for art 
I don't think people should be taking existing forms of art and injecting their own ideas into stories that already push the boundaries in multiple intellectual fronts. Seriously, do not do that. It has plenty of progressive ideas in it, and it is generally supportive of the underprivileged in society. There was no need to throw even more ideas on top of it. Why would you do that? I think doing so will cause a cascade effect where seemingly stupid arbitrary changes end up having drastic effects on the story and leading to huge gaping chasms between the show and the books. I want your desperation, Chris. I think it was also a terrible mistake for the showrunners to act like the games never existed. I suspect they did so because the games did not seem so progressive on the surface. Yeah, that's true. But claiming The Witcher 3 isn't progressive is just plain false. The game simply tried to stick to the source material as much as possible and only change slash em embellish when it felt like it was the best creative choice, rather than being the most disruptive or political choice. Good! So I do think it would have been much better for the show to closely follow the, both the books and the games. The books for the story and the games for the designs, characters, and aesthetics. There was plenty of room for diversification in the show, and it could have been done in a perfectly natural way that made sense within the bounds of the lore. But that, that isn't what Lauren was interested in. You want a cure and it's making you sloppy. She wanted to tell her own story and use a few details from the books for, ins for inspiration. You're making noise. Yennefer is the most egregious offense Lauren has made in the Witcher universe, but nowhere near the only offense. You thought you were special, but no. Soon, I hope to be releasing more videos about Witcher-related stuff. I plan to release a video about a male character next, so it doesn't look like I'm bashing women on my channel. But I had to start with Yennefer because they fucked her up so damn badly. If Anya's version of Yennefer is your favorite character ever and you love everything about her, fuck you and everything you stand for because you are wrong and I hate your guts. Done. Done. Cancelled. It's over. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course, I can't help myself but to mess with you. But you should know that I think you are basically a piece of shit if you disagree with me. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're a wonderful person, obviously. I just don't know why you think the way you do. And I think you have very, very, very bad taste. But then again, I'm just some piece of shit asshole on the internet complaining about something that I shouldn't even care about in the grand scheme of things. But because I am an overgrown man-child in many ways, I still do. But you know what? Who gives a shit? That's really all I have for you today, so be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, lots of comments. I want interaction, you miserable bastards. And, and follow my Twitter account as well. I have literally zero followers, so somebody, come on, be the first, please. Be patient while I fumble my way through the editing for the next video and, and every video to follow after that. I'm getting better at it, I'm, I'm just slow and disorganized. All right, get out of here, go on, get. I'm tired of looking at you. You got shit to do, man. My butt itches. I gotta go clean it with a wet wipe.